Welcome back to an Arc Analysis and Tips for Animators, and today I'm going to take a look at episode two and three of season one of the morning show on Apple Plus. And I'm going to cover character reactions, introductions, focus, background characters, and a bunch of stuff more. So let's go. Still going through season two, which so far is also awesome. But this show has so many fantastic characters and so many cool moments of character choices and prop usage and a bunch of stuff that you can use for animation. But before I continue, hi, my name is JD and I do acting analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips, I do animation lectures, I do news, I do reviews, I do a bunch of stuff. It's the pitch at the beginning. Check out my channel if you like it, like and subscribe, you know, the usual pitch, like, and subscribe. And if not, maybe just keep watching and maybe I'll, I'll, I don't know, I'll convince you later. But that is the pitch at the beginning. Let's get the sequences. And first one is this where he is struggling with a bunch of stuff. If you haven't seen this, he has a lot of problems. He's struggling with this and he's right now trying to make himself a cup of coffee. And all of that leads to so many problems in terms of like mental anguish. This is kind of the end of this where he started crying and everything. And now he's done and he's finally realizing that, wait, I put this in correctly. And then look at his reaction here. And Oh, just that pause and that move with the hands, looking around, he puts that in, and then as it starts working, you can see again his look, and he's surprised that it actually worked. Very happy you can drink the coffee, and that's all great. He's <laughs> breaking down again. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because if you have a character focused on something, let's go back here, right? This could be something off screen. We have never seen it. You might have an establishing shot like this somewhat, right? Maybe you see the full character and the full prop. And then we cut to this. But it's great to have your character focus on something when you have thought process and something you wanna show on screen. Because as you are continuing in your animation journey where you go beyond the mechanics of it, say, you know, you move this arm and the shoulder goes up and it moves the chest, it moves the head. You're kind of past the mechanics, you're going more into thought process and pantomime. And I love this where you're giving your character a problem. The problem is that I wanna make coffee but it doesn't work. And since you're going into pantomime and reaction on the character, it's also great when you don't have lip sync and you don't want to get into this whole aspect. How do you externalize something where, hey, I think this worked. Look at his hands. That moment of, oh, it's almost like he doesn't want to touch it too much or just let go. Like, I don't want to disturb this. It finally worked. So to me, this is a whole combination of character looking at something. This can be on screen, off screen. Just reading their reactions is a great exercise for animators and using props as a driver, right? So this could be, like I said, the end of a problem. And now we just, as a viewer saw the end, this could be something mechanic, whatever it is. And I love this. I love that moment of this, and even towards the end when he has that, oh, oh, it worked. And it's a great framing too, because you don't have to do a lot in terms of body mechanics. It's just basically this. And it's gonna it's going be all in the eyes. Obviously the lighting will be different so you can see both eyes. But I think that setup is really cool and could be a good jumping off point for an animator who is getting out of body mechanics into thought process and pantomime. With this one, I have two things to talk about. It's this <laughs> intro of this and how Bradley comes in here. So the first one is, something that's cracked me up is that you almost think it's the real character for maybe half a second because that angle is just weird. It's totally stiff and you realize, oh, this character is holding, you know, like a prop like this. I love this idea, especially if you have it as a CG character and keep it totally stiff and kind of fake out the audience. I love this. I'm going to steal this. I'm just going to say this. I'm going to do a personal shot one of these days. I'm going to totally gonna steal this idea. Love that though. And it, it also goes into character introductions or like an intro for shot, right? It's like you have this not here yet. And this could be a background, whatever you have. And then you have your name, demo reel, character animator, the year and all that stuff. And then the first thing you see is this. You're like, what am I looking at? And then you have a cool walk or maybe it goes into like a two character lip sync talk or something. But it's a fun intro that kind of fakes out the audience. And the other thing is this one. She is coming into this office for the very first time. And this is something I talk about a lot where a character is familiar and unfamiliar or not and it's, it's either or. So that entrance, if you know what's going on, you might look at your phone, do things, turn around here, maybe go in here, turn around here, because you know exactly where all those corners are, where that goes in, where the doors are and all that good stuff. But a character who has never been here, you are going to have that moment, especially if the character is impressed by it. Open mouth, looking around, you can see all this, just taking in of where am I? What is this? Looking even down here. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, let me find this. This might be, of course, the thing of, 
I have to look at my mark because I need to stand exactly here so that everything's in focus. But this just really goes into the whole showcase of I'm here for the first time and I'm going to walk around and look at things as if it is the first time. So when you shoot reference for, you know, for yourself, for your scene, always think about that. Is your character in this environment for the first time? Yes or no? This is an absolutely awesome moment and so many reasons why I love props. And this is just a great example where he just finished a discussion with him. She comes in and tells him, listen, you have an appointment. You got to do something with the next person that's here. And he realizes, wait, what? I'm busy. I have so many things to do. And the reason why I love this is this, right? He's been eating this. He probably thought that he's going to have a bit more time eating this. So what does he do when he realizes the meeting is right now? Watch him. He folds this together and shoves it in his mouth. I love it. And the reason why I love it is because the prop shows us that he's in a hurry. Yes, he could look around and be all hectic and run over there. But this is basically if you eat something, you generally don't you're not going to fold it and you're not going to shove it into your mouth like this. So this prop shows us and shows, you know, for me and for the audience, okay, I'm in a hurry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this as small as possible so I can put the whole thing in my mouth right now nom, 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 and goes off. It's great. To me, it's just a different way of, I mean, as an animator, you would actually, I would tell animators not to do this. Like, oh, I'm waiting or I'm in a hurry. This is almost like acting out words, but in live action, you have well, a lot more freedom for this. But in animation, I think this is a great way of showing I'm in a hurry, I'm gonna do something, and I gotta go over there. And I will always defend props. And that to me is also a very original way of showing I'm in a hurry, I gotta get this done, because I gotta now go to the other place. I love this. This is a great moment too, where he is asking her like, who she is. And she tells him, well, I'm such and such, and I'm the other person's producer. And everybody is shocked at this, just for context, but she wanted to do this, and he is her boss and he hasn't signed off on that yet. But she just takes initiative and goes, well, I'm the producer. And everybody's facial reactions are so great. He has that moment of, who are you? There's so much going on here. That one eyebrow, but what? And then she tells him, well, I'm the producer. And it's that hand on the hips. And I love this because it's an off-screen gesture and post change. It's implied, but you don't have to see it, but you can still tell what's going on. And she has that great little stern face of, that's what I'm going to do. And his reaction is, oh, well, I'm fast and I love his little hold on the mouth. He goes, that happened fast. So great. I love him in this show. He's so great. And after he says this, because he's clearly surprised, you can see the rat focus door and he goes, what? What did you just do? Even she goes, what did she just do? Continues on and he, he goes along with it and says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted, you know, the best person on the role and, and yeah, yeah, it's going to be okay. But I love that when she notices that he's about to turn, she's getting into that very like, hmm, yeah. And even like the head up here, it's great. And he has this, gonna blur that out. Like, oh, why did you do this to me? And I love this. And the reason why I love this is that it's all the stuff that's outside the dialogue. Right? So if you would animate this, yes, you would have an attitude depending on how she says this, great pose and everything. And you have this great delivery and that great pause in this. But then you can play so much around with other characters. And I love this setup that you have, this is the dialogue, that's what they're saying, and you're adding a bunch of people into your scene. I know this adds a lot more work, but I love that you can then play with reactions, with this, and again, how she's about to say something, but then he pretends like he's really not fully believing in this. You have like exaggerated poses like this. And again, the change of her realizing, oh, he's gonna turn around and I gotta have my you know confident pose. And then him going, why did you do this to me? There's so much you can do with extra characters. And I know this is extra work, but I think if you're comfortable with mechanics and lip sync and acting, you can add those extra layers and just add so many fun reactions that will just open up your scene to so many different acting choices and reactions that are just great. Speaking of background characters, I love that this guy, look at how he brings the paper over here. Ready? And it's that fast move, slight fold, looking here, not really looking at him. Like he's clearly on her team, he's her assistant. He has a schedule for you guys. And I love this, that little look down here. And if you look at this, he's got that little, little wink there. And the reason I'm showing you this is because the line, like whatever she is saying throughout the sequence is not super interesting. It's more like exposition, like I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, you guys have to do this for me and so on and so on. And technically as a line, that's kind of boring. But what if you use that boring line in contrast with him. 
right? So it's just kind of there. The lines are there for people to kind of listen to and react. But the main focus in your animation is this guy, <laughs> the way he hands out the paper and what he does. Now you can also say, well, but maybe I don't need the dialogue. No, maybe not, but the dialogue can still be there for rhythm to have, you know, jumping off points for other people who do not talk, for them to react. And maybe he does something where he hands it out when she is pausing. I think having a not super interesting dialogue as a driving point for pauses and rhythm where this character is the main driver in terms of your attention and the acting choices. I think that could be a really interesting setup and I just love that little moment in this sequence. And going back to him, because he's awesome, they are arguing. And you can see this clearly, arguing is a heated discussion, but also like this where she's seated, she's standing, so she can have a bit more of a in control posture where she might look down on this person and so on. But the reason why I'm showing this is because she mentioned something that really takes her off. She goes like, why are you reading through my transcript? <laughs> I love her reaction too. Once she hears it, goes, wait, what? Looks up, the face opens, and then she goes, wait a minute, and, and takes a step towards her, right? The confrontational step, invading her bubble, and so on and so on. But I'm showing you this because of this. So they're arguing, it's getting out of hand, and he goes like this. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> he could just say, hey, 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 to break it up. But no, he has a pen here and he does the combination of hey, hey, and he clicks the pen every time he says, oh, this cracks me up. It's for me another usage of props that are that is just great. It goes beyond just him saying hey, hey, hey. It's just for me something funny and original and something that the character does a lot in the show and, and I love this. So I will always defend props, the usage of props, because I always say, you might have an idea and you might film yourself and it could be great. But as you're doing your acting piece or pantomime, you have to go beyond version number one. You gotta go version five, six, and maybe version 10 or 11 is probably the first thing you're gonna start. And even then, as you animate, your shot might evolve to idea 15, depending on if you have new ideas, you film reference, you ask other people for opinions. Just as you start something, don't just go with ID number one. And this is why I do these series, because all of these actors, they're so good. And they have gone through so many different ideas and versions where, again, this is a starting off point. That being said, I love this idea. I love the whole clicking thing to interrupt someone. I might steal that as well. I'm gonna be shameless and do it. But to me, this is just a great extra level, right? You have a thing where you go, hey, 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 or hey, 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 or you have someone who's like this and goes, Hey, click, click, click. and it's that clicking sound that draws the attention of the arguing people back to you. I think it's a great idea and it's just something so creative and I will always advocate for props. You can always do something that someone else didn't think about and you can have your own creative, you know, creative ideas on top of the acting choices with the help of props. I will always defend props and I love them. Now, if you want me to give you prop ideas or you have a shot with props and you want me to talk about that, I don't know, as a segue, I have workshops where I love talking about stuff like this. I love brainstorming and discussing ideas in terms of your shots when you do. So I have workshops, you can sign up at any time. Link in the description, you can just email me. Let's talk about this when you want to start. It's very flexible. It's all tailored towards you. And speaking of tailored, nah, that's not, not a time segue, but we are at the end here. So if you're still watching, as always, I thank you for your patience to watch this until the very end. And maybe by now you like this and you want to subscribe. So hit the like, hit the subscribe button. It helps, you know, the algorithm. And then the, it basically helps having this clip seen by other people because I want, I want people to see it so they it can be helpful to them and hopefully it can continue and help other people. So that's the pitch and that's the end. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next clip.